ขอให้เราอธิษฐานด้วยกันนะครับ Let's pray สาธุการพระบิดาพระเจ้าข้าพระหลายขอพระองค์ได้รับพระเกียรติในการธรรมสการพระองค์ในวันนี้และสอนข้าพระองค์หลายผ่านคำของพระองค์ว่าพระองค์ทรงเลือกสรรข้าพระองค์หลายเป็นปวัติหลวงเป็นผู้บริสุทธิ์และเพื่อจะรับใช้พระองค์และเพื่อที่จะนำพระทั้งหลายให้มาหาพระองค์ผ่านชีวิตของข้าพระองค์ทั้งหลายขอนำพี่น้องทุกท่านได้ความเข้าใจข้าพระองค์ไหลสรรเสริญและขอบพระคุณพระองค์ร่วมกันในพระนามของพระเยซูคริสต์เจ้าอาเมนวันนี้เราจะดูการพระเจ้าทรงแต่งตั้งอาโรนให้ทุกคนนะครับ Today we shall look at how we dedicated Aaron to become the priest of the Lord ในบทบีวันในบทนี้นะครับจะพูดถึงความสำคัญของพระเยซู The scripture at this juncture talk about the importance of the priesthood. เราคงจะจำได้นะครับว่าในวัฒนธรรมตะวันออกเด็กจะต้องให้เกียรติผู้ใหญ่ Now you could remember this that in the Eastern culture, the younger one would always honor and give respect to the older one. แต่ถ้าเด็กคนนี้บวชเป็นพระเป็นเดนะครับทุกอย่างผมไม่ข้ามใช่ไหม But what if this uh, this young teen uh, enter into a monkhood? Everything become the other way around. ไม่แต่พ่อไม่แต่ปู่ไม่กล้าเจอคนนี้ Cause in the Buddhist uh, tradition, even his own or uh, the grandfather, his own father, who have to uh, uh, pay him the homage. แล้วพระในทุกวัฒนธรรมในทุกศาสนามีสิทธิอำนาจเหมือนกัน All the monks or all the priesthood in all the organized religion has some kind of a uh, power, authorities. ผมพูดเสมอนะครับว่าโมเสสและอาโรนได้ชินสิ่งพระเจ้าเปลี่ยนไว้สำหรับเรา I often mention that both Moses and his brother Aaron have tasted often. What the Lord had prepared for them. สำหรับเราเลยครับผมพูดคำว่าเราเป็นพวกเรา Us when I mention the word us, we talk about we here in this congregation. เพราะในเวลาอนาคตเราจะเป็นผู้ที่ได้รับทุกอย่างกินจนอิ่มนะครับในความหมายที่นี่คืออารมณ์ของเศรษฐกิจแต่เราได้กินจนอิ่ม Because in the upcoming future, all the Moses only taste. Just a little appetizer, but for us in the future, we will shall inherit fully what is it like. And it's the thing, Peto, but this song to Papa Chandaka. Lao to Kwan Ben Bolohi Lu Kong Pacha. In First Peter chapter 2, clearly this scripture said that all of us here are a priesthood from the Lord. And when you know the picture of Nanaka, the dog can talk a young like Bob. So we can look at the step of how to become into the priest, the ordination process. Let's look back to the chapter 29 again, Exodus, how God has called out Aaron and his people and how he dedicated them. First of all, God has chosen by separate them out of the whole race of the Israelites. In this time, there were about 2-3 million people. During the time of Exodus, when they left Egypt, we are looking at about perhaps 2-3 million population there. And Aaron is the only one person that God has called upon. ฉะนั้นถ้ามาดูในเวลานี้นะครับอาโรนจะต้องตัดสินใจยอมรับการพระเจ้าเลือกเขาลลิตเขา So if you look at this particular juncture, Aaron is now must surrender and submit to God's calling. เราดูเปลี่ยนกับเรานะครับท่ามกลางมนุษย์เจ็ดพันล้านคนเราคือคนพระเจ้าเลือกเราเรียกออกจากคนทั้งหลาย Now in comparing to what we have now, the world population of seven billion. All the Christians are actually being called out to sacrifice. But the choice to be chosen, it's not just that. 
But just because you're chosen and being called upon, it's just not the end there. See, the Bible used the word separation from the rest of the people. Many Christians and others may not understand the true meaning when God, when God chosen, call upon, and separate us out of the population. What does it really mean? Meaning that we are no longer the same as the rest of them, and we will choose, choose to use our life differently now. And Aaron will become a different person from the rest of the public. And so we need to teach our children and children's children that when we all call upon to become a Christian, we are no longer the same as our societies. Because if we still assimilate like the other, we are no longer calling to be God's people. Because Aaron by himself alone, he was calling to be very different from the rest. From an ordinary person, he is now an anointed one, a special person. So you should be proud and to tell your children the same that when God called us and He separated us, we are no longer like them. But then again, there is a price uh, that, set, that set us apart all of this. Maybe our children uh, tell us from time to time, I just want this and that, so that we can be just like the, the rest of them. But when they were young, it's our responsibility as parents to teach them that once call, when God calls upon us, we are no longer the same as them now. You should be glad and, in fact, proud of the fact that God has chosen us to be different from the rest. So Aaron is called to set apart and he must accept his new role now. And so to go through all this process, he is now going through a ceremonial step in order to consecrate himself. Just like in our Buddhist tradition back home, either the young boy enter into it or the adult enter into the priesthood, there's a step to consecrate them. เอ่อถ้าวัฒนธรรมเราหลายครั้งเราจะเริ่มเห็นใช่มั้ยครับว่าเขาจะไปฝึกในที่เตรียมเขาในการรู้จักสวดมนต์ก่อนในในในในในใน
So to be baptized by water is no longer just a symbolism now. But from the, the point of view of the recipient is that he or she is now uh, willingly to go through and willingly to accept a new life. For us as Christians, once we dip into that water, the pool of water, we are forsaking our own life, our own life and when we sub submerge it out of the water, we are accepting a new one. We are dying to sin now, which completely are meaningless to us. You die to sin, the sin that you used to only live for yourself. You are die to your sin, the sin that you only seeking for your own self gratification. But once you emerge, you become a born again with a much better meaning. And now you're living literally each day for God's mean, for the meaning of God in your life. And now your life has to go is which is to help others. When I heard of uh, an interview of a wonderful great uh, bicyclist uh, who won seven Tour de France, Lance Armstrong, or we used to know him as being a Superman. He literally won Tour de France seven years in a row. And no any other human bicyclist accomplished what he's doing. But when he came into it, I think this man has a problem. Because he gave the interviewer that all my success solely come from my own innate abilities. He in fact mentioned that God has nothing to do with it. In fact, there is really no God. I think this man has a problem. I try to sympathize with this man, perhaps maybe because of his, he's a survivor from cancer three times already. Perhaps he has a grudges match with God himself. But nowadays we actually found the answer why he won all those seven trophies of two of he was being in denial for 10 years uh, past that he never used any kind of stimulant or any kind of steroid. But now he had no choice but accepted the fact that he used them all. Throughout his professional uh, year, he'd been using those uh, enhanced uh, medica uh, medication. Why did he need to dope himself up? Why? But basically, he just wants to win. And he doesn't believe that there is a deity or any kind of God that can help him. He only believes that he needs only to help himself. We need to change our poor way of thinking now that, hey, there is a God. And this is a God that is descent above all. You can strive with your own strength all you want, it, but as if you were just doing a boxing in the air, you could not go anywhere further than that. 
So the lesson we can learn is that once God has chosen you out, He is, has a prepared a great plan for you. But will you and I accept the plan that God has for us or not? Once he has consecrated himself, Aaron and now about to put on the God, the priestly garment. It's a brand new garment that's about to be put upon him. In the ancient time, when they take, uh, when they took off the old clothing and put on the new set. The meaning is that they start life anew with him. In fact, in many cultures of this world, once the new year has come, they uh, some people, some group of people just get rid of all their clothing and bought a brand new set. Uh, true or not, I heard of many of the Thai uh, tailors that went to work in the Middle East. Are uh, they actually being hired by the family just to do tailoring for them? They said that those wealthy family are only hire a professional uh, tailor just to stay with them because they do not want to wash their clothes. What does I the they only just wear their clothes on a few times and they just get rid of them. I'm not sure how, 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 what the, the merit on this or not. Because in the Middle East, in the desert, water is much more precious than oil. I think it's true because a fresh drinking water by a gallon is cost uh, five times of the gasoline. Because <coughs> over there, there is really no, uh, hardly any rainfall, so they need to uh, filter out the water to make it uh, good enough to drink. <laughs> I think you can get a, a new career now by going to the Middle East and collect all the thrown away clothing from this family and resell them. I think you can make good money. <laughs> you only need just to wash them and it could be new again. <laughs> I think those second hand clothing in Salvation Army, I think a lot worse quality. But this priestly garment has signified a new life as a new beginning of those who believe in God. As a priest, your life is now worthwhile and you have a solid goal that you must follow through. Because in verse 7, uh, the, the procedure is that they are now going to anoint his head with oil. Nowadays, the church religion, we no longer pour in oil, uh, olive oil on someone now. <laughs> but in the, in the, in the, in the olden on the olden day the churches are just pouring the whole jar of uh, olive oil all over us. I'm sure the one who received the anointing does do not mind as much because at that time they used olive oil just about for everything. But in today's uh, meaning, it's, it's, a, it's a symbolize a, an anointing of a Holy Spirit, meaning that once being anointed by Him, we are now born again. So without the anointment of the Holy Spirit upon our life, we can no longer call ourselves being born again. So 
So you can see that all these steps, although some of them uh, we can follow through according to human tradition, but certain steps uh, can only be done by God alone. มีนักเรียนในวิทยาลัยต่างชุมนุมอาจารย์ท่านอยากจะสาธารณาเป็นศาสนาอาจารย์คล้ายๆเป็นโปรอย่างนี้นะครับ Some of my students inquired of me uh, of my theological school said uh, professor I would like to be ordained so that I can become just like one of these priests ผมบอกว่าอาจารย์ So I told him I think you need to ask God first คือโบสถ์จะทำได้มนุษย์จะทำให้ใครที่ไหนเมื่อไหร่ก็ได้แต่ถ้าพระเจ้าไม่ทำด้วยนั้นไม่มีความSee, a church or a group of people can give you that ordination or that consecration, but if God is not being a part of it, I think it's kind of meaningless. Remember now, to be a special chosen uh, priest under the priesthood of God, God must choose it Himself and set them apart. I sometimes joke with you that some of us are being called upon by God, set apart and anointed. But some of you are being called upon by your wife, set apart and anointed by your wife, or your father, or your father in law in that sense. So that is the truth. I have many priests, many priests, set apart and anointed by their wives, set apart. And I find in some situation that the, the preacher himself set himself up by letting the family uh, being a part of their anointment or, or ordination, self-ordination. If God not being a part of that ordination process is meaningless, you are just only deceiving yourself. You perhaps are deceiving others as well. ฉะนั้นการมาดูเราเลยครับถ้าเราไม่ผ่านขั้นตอนของการเกิดใหม่ในพระวิญญาณเราเป็นแค่ตัวตลกตัวเองนั่นเอง So looking back in our life, each one of us, if you're not going through the step of at least being born again in God, you are just only joking around with yourself. พระวิญญาณพระเจ้าอยู่ในชีวิตของเรานะครับเราให้ชีวิตใหม่กับเรา Because if God's spirit indeed are not dwell within us and we do not experience that new life within Him. เราจะเห็นความแตกต่างใช่ไหมคนที่เกิดใหม่ในพระวิญญาณจะมีฤทธิ์เดชมีผลของพระวิญญาณในชีวิตของเรา You can see a different right away on those who being anointed and living according to the Holy Spirit. They were fruitful according to the other one, which is only the other way around. เราเองถ้าสังเกตเราจะเห็นความแตกต่าง If you carefully are observing this individual, you will see a difference. แล้วก็ต่อไปนะครับพระพีจะไม่บอกชัดแต่เรารู้ว่าขั้นหลังจากเจอพระน้ำมันแล้วเขาจะวางมือบนอาโรนะครับ The next step is that may not be as clear here but once they uh, anointed with oil now they can place the hand on their head เราเรียกว่าพิธีเจิมตั้งด้วยมือนะวางมืออธิษฐานคือ We simply call it a laying of the hand to anoint for the anointment เหมือนกับการส่งออกไปนะครับอันนี้เหมือนกับการมอบหน้าที่มอบอำนาจให้ผู้จะส่ง This is almost like a transfer of the responsibility and send them out literally. So you cannot really be a priest without being sending out. Because the, the duty of the priest is that to represent God, to be sent out to serve the people. So like today, we do not all, uh, give people ordination so that they can go out and brag to their neighbor, but we set them up so that they can go and serve people. I know of many wealthy Christians in Thailand came here to the U.S. so that they can just get, go through their ordination process. It seemed nice that they came all the way to the U.S. to be all, uh, to go to ordination, but once they're being set up, what are they going to do with that? <laughs> so what's so good is is the ordination when you went back home and just put that plaque of your ordination on the wall without doing any good at all to your communities. I look at my poor, poor market. Sorry. 
He'll pitch you off your ordination all over the wall in your living room. Or you go to Costco and make the print of your ordination uh, day and just and hand them out to the rest of the world. Thinking that people have no idea what just went on. But don't you realize that uh, once Aaron went through this ordination process, he actually set himself to work hard every day for the Lord. Somebody asked there to ask me, uh, Pastor, once I become an ordained minister, can I quit my job? <laughs> in, in, in many religions, perhaps in Buddhists, they can leave their monkhood uh, temporarily, get out of the temple. <laughs> I have a friend who actually went into the temple only just for three days. <laughs> and some I hear went to the temple in the morning, half his head shaved, and left the temple the same night. <laughs> But we need to realize that the ordination of someone who's been chosen now are a lifetime duty. Uh, there's no uh, resignation from the ministry. You literally gonna die under that calling of God. So think twice. Be very careful before you think that you're being called because there's no way out now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mark here try to <laughs> too late. <laughs> <laughs> try to give you a hard time. Yes, too late for me now. God has chosen, he called him out and he set the person up. It is God only business with that person particularly. <laughs> See the day that you uh, put your trust in your Lord Jesus, in the Lord Jesus Christ become a Christian. <laughs> that day actually is the day that you make a permanent covenant with God. <laughs> it is a covenant that cannot be uh, called a quit. <laughs> a covenant that cannot be changed. <laughs> and this is a promise that not only will last through this lifetime but will continue forever. See that you call upon God for your help and that this God is only your, your God. And this God promised that He will dwell with us forever. We will become a people of God. We will now become an heir to the throne of God. And with that, you come with a special privilege and special responsibilities. You know, on, on his ordination, Orona has the authority either to curse or to bless someone. This is a authority and a special calling that God gave to each of his calling priests. During the last day of Christ, he spoke to Peter. You know, remember what the Lord said to Peter? Whatever God is gonna do with someone or binding certain individual, that binding can continue on into heaven. Meaning that Peter is now being laid upon with the authority that he can bless anyone or whatever he does, the, the fact will continue on to the heaven world. But the blessing are now not only lying on Peter now, but on every single believer that believe in the Lord. We have the ability to go and bring salvation to certain people. 
Because if you choose not to bring them the good news, those people are set apart. I mean, are set aside for eternal punishment. It is actually is within your right to exercise. And remember now also uh, uh, responsibility for us of us too. No one being consecrated to enter the monkhood and then just go home, leave, uh, go home to sleep without attending to the duty of the temple anymore. No one has been called, ordinated to become God's priest and no longer want to serve His Lord. There's no genuine Christian that truly walk with the Lord and not telling others about this good news of the salvation. This should be a part of your life already. God has chosen us and called upon us. And found us. He has, uh, he has ordinated us. So that he can use us and send us out. So that we can represent the Bring the good news to tell the others that God has loved them. And then that you can stay and disciple them with these new lives. It's not it's no longer possible for you to be just an ordinary Christian without serving the Lord like that. Remember, we all have been chosen. We have been called. We have been set apart for special needs. And God is going to send us out. <laughs> and one day, each one here might have, will have to file a report to the Lord. And He going to ask us this. Are you a righteous steward that you're supposed to do the task that I have bestowed on you to do? Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, you are sitting up there on your throne, way, way so high, way up there. And yet you look down upon us and you show mercy on us that your only Son came to dwell among us, the incarnation of the Lord Jesus, to eat and sleep and be among us and dwell with us, Lord God. Help us that we now can experience what you are like to your Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. Help us that we will walk according to your calling, to this higher call. I hope no one here would think less of themselves because all of you are now qualified to bring the good news, to be friends and to love other people, those who never experienced this love. Lord God, it's our duty to bring it and give it to them so that they too can experience a new life and a new joy, Lord God, which some of them unfortunately never experienced and never know what's it like to have this joy of God in their heart. Help us, God, to be bold, to be courageous, to go out as we are called to be a priest, to be the line of priesthood, Lord God. What an honor it is, what a privilege that you allow us to do this work for you. Thank you so much. Help us, Lord God, because time and our drawing gone short now. Help us to live each day with your grace in mind. In Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless you all.